Sorry about him. You all right? He'll go back to sleep in a minute. Don't think he likes me. It's not a full moon, I don't think. Oh, apparently it is. Is it? Apparently. Oh, well, if it's a full moon and it's Friday the 13th, then absolute carnage. It's Friday night at South Park Station. Not yet, just about to breathe. On the first floor, Sergeant Nathan Adelsey is leading a start of shift briefing for E Group. Hello. So, Friday the 13th, that's always good. We're a first hole on it. Burge, Hello. If you go on uh, Hotel 14, please, mate. Yep. And then we've got Headley. Hello. If you go with Burge on Hotel 14 as well, please. Have a chat with the pubs and stuff, see what's going on. I don't know if it's still tickets or whether it's just turn up on the door and get in. No, it's just turn up. Is it? Very well then. Mm hmm. Awesome, thanks very much. We'll pop down and get your camera. PC Simon Berger is crewing with new recruit Beth Headley. Go on then, let's go. Um, that's what the callers said. So he's trapped in the car park, seems unhinged, and he's acting like a caged animal. <laughs> in the force control room, Maria Hogan is on dispatch. Police emergency. Hi, Richard Fire. Can we request your attendance, please, at a building fire? And what's the reasoning for attendance? We believe it's deliberate ignition before the fire. They are good okay. The fire is now extinguished. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye. We close the door. Yeah. yeah? We no go. Yeah. And no more noise. Yeah. OK. All right? All right? OK. Thank you. Good night. PC Berger and trainee officer Headley are finishing a job dealing with a neighbour dispute as the call comes in. Lima Sierra 4390. Had a fire. It's believed to be deliberate ignition. It is a residential property. Roger, I, I have got a chew too with me. If you've uh, possibly got somebody else who could back up. Right. Oh, I've got no one free. Officers are already on the scene. A mother has accused her son of setting fire to her house. Let's go ahead with the details. That's received. He is recorded PNC, not currently wanted. Got a warning for self-harm. Last arrest was for a fraud. So if we're arresting for arson, then we'll need to seize his clothing. Yeah. We'll need to be swabbing his hands, etc. Okay. So what are we swabbing his hands for? Petrol, stuff like that. Any evidence of accelerants? Fire service are happy that it is a deliberate ignition. Yep. They will have to come three of them. Mm -hmm. Some have left the address. Yep. Um, unaccounted for mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, there's a cupboard open inside, and there appears to be four thousand pound missing. Um, he's the only one with access to the property, and there's no forced entry. Mm -hmm. um, he's Listen. the only person who had access to the property other than the IP. He's got a key as well. Okay. Um, Who is the offender? He's just on the other side of it. Right, let's go and see. Right. Hotel 14 is going to go lock someone up for setting the fire. Yeah, it's exciting. The suspect's mum has given a statement, also accusing him of stealing £4,000. We need to have a chat with you, mate. Yes, the arrest on suspicion of arson, OK? So you don't have to say anything, but it may help me defence if you do not mention one question, oh. something which you later rely on in court. Oh, we'll, 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 we need to take you to the police station okay. and, and get it dealt with, all right? Do you want to come and have a seat in our car, buddy? Okay. Up in the back. Just here. This one. There we go. NC from Hotel 14. Go ahead. 
We've got one in custody, we're just heading up there now. We see you, thank you, I'll let them know. Control, can just obviously make them well, we need a dry cell. Someone ring custody and let them know they've got one coming in, we'll need a dry cell. Dry cells have no toilets or basins to stop suspects washing away forensic evidence. Hello. Hello, you got one coming in, you'll need a dry cell. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really busy. I'm going to get you some water in a minute, all right? Just give us a chance. On the ground floor of South Park Station, detention officer Martin Halford is on a 12-hour night shift. Here you go, your water, buddy. Sorry it took so long, we've just been really, really busy. All right. Come on, Hank, let's get you inside, mate. Circumstances of arrest. It's on suspicion of arson. Um, we believe that he was the, the only person that would be able to get into the property at that time, other than the IP. Just to clarify, it's a deliberate ignition inside the property. It was started deliberately. That's the suspicion. Right, I'm going to authorise your detention yeah, at the police station. Sarge, have we got any bags down here? Okay. Um, what we're looking at doing is taking some swabs of your hands. Just to see what chemicals are on there. We'll pop through and we'll get the hand swabs done. Okay, so we'll go through here then. Obviously, we need to seize the clothing, but that has to be done in special bags. So we have arson bags here. Yeah. If there's any accelerants on there, they'll then release gases into that bag. Just... Okay, so now we're going to do your left hand first. Officers searching the scene have confirmed the missing money has not been found, so the suspect can be further arrested. Oh, we'll just go out. Just want to waste the desk a second there. Uh... Yeah. Based on the fact that there's a full class of hands gets into your name's address, I am further arresting you on suspicion of theft. How does that have anything to do with me? This just gets worse. I'm also going to see his mobile phone and his. This way. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a tea or a coffee? Tea, tea, sugar, no problem, I'll sort that out for you. The man will be held in custody overnight. And CID will start their investigation in the morning. There's been a fire in a cupboard under the stairs. Yeah. Bit coincidental that it happens where his mum's been keeping £4,000. He's been the only person with access to the property uh, and he hasn't been with Mum at the time when it's right. occurred. So, that's so we've got nothing to say, it definitely is him. It's just hopefully not Mum. We went for Covid jabs and it was pretty much summer. 25 degrees, it was like jacket, vest, stabby, top, thermal, thermal, thermal. In the city centre, it's nearing kicking out time. A lot of boisterous people around tonight. PC Chris Fletcher and PC Jack Ellerton are on a night shift patrol. Hey! Where? He had the night. Which night? I think we need a taser unit, please. We've got a operation team, we call the night. Yeah, we see. Keep your hands out your pockets. Hands out your pockets. Step forward. Step forward. Step now. forward. Keep your Do hands not out. make a move. Step forward now. Step forward now. Hands in the air. Hands in the air. Hey. On your knees. On your knees. On your knees. You're too far, Liam. Go ahead. Not Caesar, but you want some more backup. Thank you too for our pop gun as well. Where's he gone? Hospital's left pocket. Cops on. Stay there. Just stop. Stay there. Where is it? You've got nothing on you. Stay there a second. That's fine. Well, I need to make sure because we've received some information. All right. I know. I did it because I knew what you were going to do. Even though I was fucking innocent. I know. Right. Why have you done that though, dude? No, because they come to me. He's trying to fucking fight me. Two, two nights. Good. Yeah, he's in cuffs. He's stating that he's, he's said to yes! people he's got a knife because he knows of the reaction he was going to get. Um, 
I think there's other issues here. Yeah, understood. Thank you. I will fucking destroy you! Okay. That's it. Chill out, fella. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just keep, keep your head down, down mate. <clears throat> on, his, on his legs, he's trying to smash his head. Are oh, you Polish star fucking scum? Right. Oh, Stop okay. it now. Mate, you're coming. I have you! Mate, you're, you're under arrest for Section 5 public order. <laughs> and see, this lad's coming in Section 5. Got it. Yeah, Roger. No knife has been found on the man. Right, just let him walk, let him walk. Yes, thanks, mate. He's in the van now. Or safe. We'll make a move and we'll meet him down at custody. On the ground floor of the station, the cells are filling up. Do you want to have a conversation with your wife? Why don't you speak to her? If I give her yeah, it's your wife. You know how wives are. Exactly, so here we go, mate. It's all yours. <laughs> We've all been there. Come on in. I am not guilty of that shit. The man accused of shouting racial abuse is brought into custody. My mental health, what my mind's thinking right now. I want a punishment, I want every punishment. This is a stupid allegation. I am not guilty, man. I need to speak to the officer and I need him to tell me why you're here in front of you. I'm so, not fucking guilty. What's the grounds? Uh, police have been made aware that DP had a knife. Fuck it, mate. Yeah. Bullshit. That's uh, and during his detention has shouted, Fuck off all you Polish. So he was Polish members and she was public. Polish. All right? I've been arrested for this bullshit accusation and because of that, I'm pissed off! Do you understand? Can we get him down to his cell, please? So they can. Oh, Give me oh, right. Ow. Right, it's going to be a strict search. Just for what you said, I want to make sure you've got nothing on you that's going to cause you any harm. I'm going to remove all your clothing. I can't remove it. Do you play Killer Snap? No. I love playing Snap with people who don't know me. Because you know people have got <laughs> like this, they go over and they go Snap. And I don't, I go, Snap! And they grab my hand off to get the cards. <laughs> oh, who brought these cobs in? The bread cakes, Ravi, not cobs. They're cobs. We're cultured in here. Oh, Can't solve crime on an empty stomach. On the second floor of the station is CID. Yeah, fire investigator stated that it was deliberate ignition and that it had started in airing cupboard. The only person having access was her son. DC's Andy Bates and Ravi Gurwal are investigating last night's suspected arson, in which a man is accused by his mother of setting fire to her house and stealing £4,000. As it's set fire to it to try and disguise the fact that he took it, but then he's not got the cash on him, so if he has took it, where is it now? Where does he trust leaving it? Is it in his car, which we've not located? I don't see what the evidence is at the moment. Well, at the moment, the, there isn't any... I just don't believe she's four thousand pound in the hearing. No. I just don't believe it. Because that's where I keep my money. She's saying he's nicked from her before, so that's why she keeps it in there. Nah, it's not, it's not sitting right. Go and visit that woman. Find it where she hasn't gone to see her. Who's driving? Whatever, well, mate. Well, let's go up to the scene, knock on some doors, then we'll get a feel for it. Lovely stuff. Next step, please. My ex-partner was put in front of the magistrates this week for harassment and stalking. I've just received a letter this morning, which I believe has come from her. I don't know whether it's been posted before or since she was arrested. Has she ever sent letters before? Yes, yeah. there was a letter previously. I'm assuming that she's been told not to make any contact with you whatsoever. Yeah. I'll put it as a priority response. Yeah, Roger. 
front door is locked and secure. Are you happy with that? Yeah, absolutely. PC Simon Berger is on another job, responding to a report of a suspected burglary as the call comes in. He's dispatched to speak to the caller about his ex-partner. I know that she's been arrested several times for harassment and quite clearly she's not getting the message. Marvellous. <coughs> Are we right to go and have a chat somewhere? Yeah, yeah, come on in. Marvellous, thank you. So, just talk me through this job. Right, yeah. I've got a, a letter mm -hmm. which is very similar to a letter I received previously while she was being investigated. I've got the letter if you want to see it. Yeah, if you could, um, what's that supposed to mean? And as she yeah, mentioned that, that before in... In previous messages that she's sent, she's mentioned it. I take it not many people knowledge. know about it. No. Right, I'm going to try and get her lifted now. Yeah, well, she's called me three. Yeah, I'll try and get her in tonight. I'll we'll okay. give you a bell and just let you know one way or another. All right. Okay, cheers. What's the time gap between him leaving the pub to them arriving back? She said he left between 9 and 9.30. On the other side of the city, detectives are heading to the scene of the suspected arson. So we've got an hour and a half on the counter for at the moment, there's not masses of, of evidence against him. And sort of a lot of it is circumstantial. Last night, the mother and son went to a pub. He left early, and she claims he went home and started the fire. Uh, so you guys have been away? We stayed at my mum's on a Friday night. Right. Detective Andy Bates is conducting house-to-house -house inquiries. So nobody were in last night or anything? Nobody would have seen or heard anything? No, no, no. really sorry, no. No, that's fine. That. But the suspect's mother is not at the scene. Did Mark give you any handover about anyone who's been spoken to or anything? Anyone's come out? Or... Uh, he said uh, she's, she's been back, but other than coming back to try and get a cat out, I've heard nothing about any things going on. So do you know where she is now? Out with her daughter, I believe. Good. Can I run something by you, mate? Yeah, go ahead. So we're just at the scene present at the moment for the arson. It sounds like the occupant has been allowed to go around the back of the property without an officer. During this whole night, anyone could have potentially just gone in and out. Hi, Hello. I'm here about the incident that happened yesterday yeah. next door. Yeah. Just wanted to see if you saw or heard anything. I called the fire. It's yourself, is it? That's right. Brilliant, OK. Do you want to come in? Is that OK? Yeah, that's right. I understand that you called us, but I don't know what you've seen. Right, so we went in the backyard and I could see smoke coming out of the window. And who did you see? The next door neighbour and son's girlfriend. <laughs> what did they do when they came round? She's got a little bit upset. It struck me at the time as odd. She said, oh, the door's open. I need to get in there. OK. And I thought, you know, why would she want to go into the house when clearly there's a fire in there? And that front and back door of theirs, if you opens and closes, can you hear it opening and closing? Yes. Okay. Actually, it starts the dog off. Okay. Yeah. So from smelling that smoke onwards, mm -hmm. did you hear either of those doors open or close? No, no. What was their relationship like? She sometimes puts him in the corner. She thinks things are going on that aren't happening. That sounds like paranoia. This is the way that she's described it herself. Okay. Um, what I'll do is I'll go and speak to my colleague outside. Is that okay? Right, no, no problem. Yes. Brilliant, thank you for your time. Right. Just spoken to Corla. Yeah. He's not heard that front door or back door open or close. Right. Seen the smoke coming out. And then the fire brigade get called. They arrive five minutes later. At the moment, the statement points away from him. Yeah. Is it the case that he wasn't here? Is it the case that he was here? He's potentially hidden that money and now walking back after hiding that money. We'll get in touch with complainant. Give her a ring, find out where she is. Hi, Ed. My name's Andy Bates. I'm a detective calling from Lincoln CID. If you could give me a ring, please, when you get this message. Forensic officers and fire investigators arrive at the scene. She is basically bed linen yeah. and sheets and towels. And there was some cash, but nowhere near the amount that was intimated. How much are we talking? Uh, 200 quid. Right, okay. She's saying 
Four grand has gone. So oh, why leave oh. that? It's got Thanks. to be an ignition source, so there's got to be something that's going to start it. We'll have a quick look round inside. This is the airing cupboard. Yeah. As you can see, and he confirmed before he touched anything else, he said it was definitively open. It was open? Yes. Yeah. You can see most of the fire damage at the back. From what we're seeing, it looks like it's something down here. So this is the money we found? Yes, that cash there was loose and also some cash in some envelopes, but nowhere near full. The hope was that we might have found the money amongst the debris. But if not, the only alternatives are either that it's been stolen or it wasn't there in the first place. None the wiser, unfortunately. Um, it would be nice to find the car and it'll be interesting to see what he says in interview. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. DC Bates has just received a call from the suspect's mother. She basically just confirmed some movements, the reasons why the suspect left the pub uh, where his vehicle was initially and the reasons that they didn't stay at the pub. He never returned from going to get some ID. So they've gone looking for him. His car's not been there where it was originally. So that's when they've started walking home and bumped into the neighbor who said, we phoned 999 because your smoke alarm's going off. Uh, and they've come back just as a fire brigade have arrived. So you know when I got assaulted last week? Yes. I end up like doing my finger. Then the dog bit it the other day as well. Oh, marvelous. So now it's, um, it's a right old mess, yeah. PC Simon Berger and Special Sergeant Kevin Taylor are going to arrest a woman suspected of sending a poison pen letter to her ex-boyfriend. This girl's been convicted of uh, stalking her ex-partner. Right. She's got bail conditions not to contact him. Yeah. And then yesterday, um, he's received a letter referencing things that only she'd know about. Okay, Victor, 4 one NC. Are you guys committed or um, can you go back up another unit? In the force control room, Lorna Hartley is dealing with urgent calls on dispatch. Yeah, that's all received. Control 9 two, Lima. Yeah, go ahead. Can you show yourself to next week here at 9 2 on the scene for arrest? Received. So you're going to have to come with us, I'm afraid. That, that, that's fine, Please but we're still, uh, it's not optional, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, the allegation is that you've breached your bail by allegedly sending a letter to... So in relation to that, I'm arresting you for breaching your bail. You do not have to say anything, but may harm your defence. You do not mention when questions of which law in court, anything you do say, maybe give me an evidence, OK? OK, we need to take you there. How many do you need? No! Control, what's the location in the last unit? I'll make my way over. No. Come on! So, um, I need a unit with a van, please. Yeah, we'll go pick them up. Thank you. Sergeant Dan Cooper is providing backup. They've gone to arrest somebody. I'm not sure who or why, but they're being a bit uh, aggressive. So they want the moment to go and help them out. Calm Come down. <laughs> Two, three, Lima. I'm not far. I'll make my way there as well. I'm having my what cigarette. you're saying about being embarrassed, OK? I'm having This is a result of your cigarette. behaviour. Go on then, stub that out. Let's get you gone. Mind your head. Get your head on the way. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, you've got one coming in. Ah, lovely. Bye. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Looking at Nee, she's got a job where she's reported that she's had multiple transactions taken out of her account and believes that it was done by her son. On the second floor of the station, CID is running checks on the mother who accused her son of arson and stealing £4,000. 
Officers have investigated it and the crime has actually been cancelled. The bank card has not been stolen and she still has it in her possession. They have found a separate incident where she falsely accused her son of stealing money and reported him to the police. Could this be an insurance job? Would the pay insurance if you kept your £4,000 cash in the air and covered? Yeah, as long as you've insured that value. Yeah. And also the potential possibility of the paranoia or the malicious report. It bears some weight to her reliability as a witness. There's something not right about it all. Are you all having coffee? <laughs> Only a quick one, mate, yeah. What? Eh? I know my accent's bad, mate, but come on! What? <laughs> right, pack that in. Come on, matey. Mind your head. Because you can't just bring me to court because well, I haven't fucking had my. Well, OK. No step in here. This way. In custody, a woman accused of sending a poison pen letter to her ex-boyfriend is being booked in by PC Berger. Hello. OK, I'm just going to speak to the officer just to find out why you're here, OK? She's been, uh, been given bail conditions with conditions not to contact. The allegation is that he's received a letter <laughs> containing content which she's one of the only few people to know about. I haven't done it. Right, just give me, give me a second, all right? Okay, I just, haven't done the okay. letters. Now just calm down for me, all right? No, it's not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. You are going to replace in a cell. <laughs> Can you just grab her head, please? <laughs> Get her Can you just grab her head? Please, get off me. She's going to be going to B4. Finished, she needs a safety suit. Get your gloves on, please. Listen, no. we're going to take you to your cell, but last time you were here, you placed clothing no. round your neck. I will walk! I will walk! walk then. Stand up then! Walk. Get off me and I will walk! I'm not going to take my no. hands off you. Get him to stop grabbing me like that and I will walk! OK, step back for a second. Yeah. You're given one chance, OK? Come on, then. I want my solicitor now. now. Which one? Be sick. Watch my solicitor. Watch. OK. Where is the suicide suit? Kim? Fucking bullshit, I mean, I'm fucking bullshit, I'm fucking We'll be surprised if you're within. We'll okay. pop down in a bit. <laughs> uh, oddly, she said there about, I haven't even got a computer. But I didn't make any mention of the fact that the letter had been typed. <laughs> oh, you definitely put a statement in with that one, yeah. Very much. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. I was bringing well, calls to customers. Again. Please do not come again. Oh, how rude. <laughs> well. Amy brought some cakes in. I asked her for the cake pan and she said, sort of no, but yeah. <laughs> Fair place, huh? You've never had to bring cakes in, have you? Oh, yeah. If you bring them in and you haven't done anything wrong, then people start asking you what you've done. So this is the suspect for the arson's mobile phone. On the second floor of the station, Detective Sergeant George Wynne is investigating the man accused of setting fire to his mother's house. From my beautiful girl, I don't know if that's his missus. She's wrong about 21.55. Uh, that must be when they were leaving the, the pub. It looks like she's sending loads of messages, wanting to know where he is. I can't believe you're getting the blame, you would never do this. 23.42, trying to ring you. Yeah, it's her again saying, get back to your mum's now, and then just answer your fucking phone. So it doesn't look like she's actually got a clue that he was up to anything. It would appear that he's encouraging his mum to go out with him to the pub and, he, and his missus for a drink, but then he's gone to order food and said that the barman won't serve him because they want ID. So then says he's going back to his car to get the ID, but never comes back. They then get bored waiting for him, so then go back to the house, find that the house is on fire, the cupboard door's open and the cash is missing. So what we think he's done then is he's then taken the money and put it in his car. 
if we don't find the cash, it might be really difficult to prove that it was actually him. Have you... I've, I've put a couple in. I, I went for the dogs, which I didn't get. I went, I went for the spotter, which I came third. Um, and here's the top two. And then I got, I got feedback on my applications for that. So everything they've said, I've put into this one. On the second floor of the station, PC Mark Solder is doing mid-shift paperwork. Police emergency. I need the police at my house. I've reported this guy numerous times at my house again. I've, I made a statement last right, time. What's he, he trying to do? What's he trying, trying to, to do? Turn my house down. A call comes in about a man threatening a woman. Lima in the 026 Lee Mercy. She's in there. We've got a job to be there now and it's causing issues for us. Apparently he's making threats to burn the house down of her. Yeah, we see. Oh, bless him. He's never going to get his dinner. We only have those three for the whole of Lincoln at the minute, and they've been to three jobs in about 20 minutes. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, okay. he was here with us. Yeah, this is his van. Okay. He told me to come to, my dad, uh, to come to his house. Right. He lives there. Okay. He misses little grass, man. Nick me, nick me, nick me. Well, yeah, that's plan B. But someone's, someone's called to say yeah. that you're here again, shouting and swearing. Well, mate, I've asked well, that's, twi that's twice now. Bring, but, but you are. But you have since I've got here, mate. You've been shouting. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, officer, look at me. Is it in the car? I've got a bit of weed on me, but I don't know how much. OK, where, where is that? Probably, I don't know, officer. In one of my pockets, probably a 10 bit. What are you doing? Why are you going in my waist for, you weirdo? Because you've got two drugs on. I said in my on. pockets, you fucking idiot. Right, which it's pocket? Me. It should be, if that, this I've, one. I've probably have smoked it. OK. I'm only saying to you, because right. I'm not well, we appreciate your honesty, don't we? Let's get, let's, get, let's get in the car. Do you... They're nicking me for nothing, you little dip. Come on, mate. Watch your head. Oi! No! Come on, sit down, mate. You're because he's put the phone down. Come on, sit down. No! What's your leg? Oh, what have you bought, Ed? Oh. He's been rolling round on the floor in there and he's suddenly just gone still. Yeah, he's on his way back out. Downstairs in custody, the suspect is left in the holding cell, while PC Andy Smith books him in. He's walked in from the car into custody. As long as he now he knows he's going to spend the night in a cell, he's acting on. So we'll take through and then so we'll get cracking. Along the corridor, detectives are about to interview their arson suspect. We'll start the interview then. This interview has been audio recorded and may be used as evidence if his case is brought to trial. I'd like you to tell me what you know about the offences for which you've been arrested. I've got a prepared statement to read out. I totally deny committing any offence. I've not set no fire to Mum's airing cupboard. I've not stolen no money. I didn't even know about any money in Mum's airing cupboard. 
After leaving the pub to look for my ID, I did not go to my mum's address before receiving the call to say the house was on fire. I decided to go and purchase some weed, and before I could purchase any, I received a call saying my mum's house was on fire. I walked to my mum's address, and we were standing outside for ages before I was arrested. I loved my mum, and I'd never want to hurt her. We need a little bit more information from you. There's a Pufay in that room. Inside that Pufay, there is a key that unlocks that airing cupboard. Do you know about that key? No. The fire started in that airing cupboard. People's lives have been put in risk. Who's responsible for that? No. Did you set that fire thinking people would think the money burned in the fire? No. Your car. Officers have spent a considerable amount of time looking for your car and they can't find it. Where is it parked? No, no. Why do you want to answer no comment to that question? No, no. Is it because there's money in there? No, no. I don't have any further questions for you and neither does Andy. Do you have anything else that you want to say before I stop this interview? No, no. Okay, we'll end the interview there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's fucking lying, isn't he? In custody, detention officers are dealing with the man brought in for drunk and disorderly, whose behaviour has become increasingly erratic. If you look at the way he's pretended to fall down there, his head doesn't hit the ground hard. Mm. He goes down gently onto the bed, then his head gently goes onto the floor. I'm yeah. satisfied that he's feigning that. With all this medical stuff that he's portraying here, the healthcare professional's already up dealing with other people, so he's dragging it out for himself, really. Down the corridor. No, we can pop you. Uh, oh, yes. Detectives have just interviewed the man accused of starting a fire in his mum's home and taking her money. He's refusing to tell them where his car is. I know I laboured the point a little bit in there about the car. That's something we could do with finding. Well, I, I can tell you where, where it is. Can you? Yeah. Right. Yeah, go for it. It's off. Thank you for that. All right, I'll go and sit you back down, mate. It's all right. So he described it as this horseshoe. So. The way we're going up now, it goes back down and there's another road that runs parallel just over there. Sydney's a big one, isn't it? It's a swamp. Yeah. Yep, that's it. We wouldn't have found Disco. that. It's a sneaky place to hide it, isn't it? Good job. All right. Okay. Here's the ID. What's not in the car? That's not in the car. There's several SIM cards in here. Some numerous lighters in here as well. It'd be nice to find £4,000. Obviously, it's not the sort of thing you normally keep in your car. The problem is people get really inventive when they're hiding stuff. Um, we've done the boot, we've done the interior, nothing found yet. We're going to do the bonnet, but also the house he's parked it outside of house cameras. Whether they work or not, I don't know, but it's worth having a look. Ooh. Unfortunately, we've not found anything, but we've still got more to do. He looks to have calmed down on the camera. He looks to have um, got on his bed and settled down, so. Back at the station, detention officers are still monitoring the volatile suspect. We'll see. Beeping at him and hopefully he'll go to sleep. You can see he's breathing and he seems calm, so I won't disturb him. He's probably worn himself out from his antics, so. Has he got on his bed now? Yeah, yeah, so. 
Yeah. So what's the plan now then? Unless there's anything else you can think we can do tonight. I don't think, I mean, we're, we're against his clock as well, realistically now. Yeah, we've only got literally three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. The man accused of arson has been in custody for nearly 24 hours. Police need to charge or release him. I don't think there's anything else, realistically, yeah. what we're going to gain. I reckon we just, we're going to have to bail him. Right, so I'm going to, I'm going to book off then. And I'll, I'll see you in the morning. Yay. Do it all over again. Come on, lady, come on, sorry. You feel okay to be released, mate? Nothing? No worries? Anything I can answer before you go? Don't think so. How long have you been in? Uh, 22 hours. Long time. Yeah, I can imagine, especially with your own thought, just yeah. in the cell with your own thoughts. Right, so the inspector's authorised you've been released on bail. Well, it is frustrating. We we had some inquiries to do while he was in custody. Yeah. Okay, open. There is a picture that, that we need to identify. There is more to it, and hopefully those further inquiries will help us get there. Right, you are released, so you're free to go. We're looking at information that can lead us towards him or away from him. Yeah. We have to look for both. 